Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm going to try to fix my FPV goggles. Some of you might know that I like RC planes and I fly them with the FPV system. These are the EV100 model. They came out this year from uh, Ishin and they are pretty interesting for their price point. You can get them for about $100 or slightly less when they're on uh, sale. I won't go into the uh, details and the specs of these, there are plenty of uh, good reviews out there. I just wanted to point out that they are great value for money and a great set of uh, goggles for beginners. And if you would like to check them out, uh, I'll place a link in the description below. Unfortunately, they do suffer from this uh, issue on certain conditions, like a high contrast image, they seem to distort the image and some people are also reporting a gray bar appearing on screen. Uh, I have grabbed some images while this is happening and uh, mine looks like this when the distortion appears. Uh, sorry for the poor quality, I was shooting with my phone through the uh, lenses of the goggles. So I get this uh, black spot on the upper left and uh, a bar of distortion across the entire width of the screen. At first I thought the issue is caused by the camera. I was suspecting the camera because it is quite abused at the front of the airplane and gets hit a lot during uh, landings and uh, crashings. But when I used another pair of goggles, the issue completely disappeared. So that's when I started uh, thinking it's not the camera. Also at the same time I discovered some uh, mentions of the same issue on the internet. It appears Banggood has released a fix, a uh, code fix for this uh, problem. And that involves the user disassembling the goggles and uh, soldering a capacitor. I was curious to why the problem appeared in the first place and uh, while googling on this issue I found the problem documented on a blog fishpepper.de and uh, I'll link this one in the description as well. It seems uh, this guy was also working on some analog video system and uh, the problem looked familiar to him. He investigated and the conclusion is pretty interesting. While probing with the scope he saw what looked like a bad line sync. In analog video signals, the voltage levels matter a lot because different voltage levels will mean a new line or a new frame. So having these uh, voltage levels out of their specified ranges will create uh, various distortions on screen. To solve this problem, a capacitor is used to AC couple the video signal. This way the capacitor removes any DC voltage present on the signal leaving just the AC signal with the presumably correct voltage levels and no distortion. In this case, they used the ceramic capacitor in the circuit, but it's a small value, around 20 microfarads as uh, reported by Fishpepper, and for confirmation I will also remove my capacitor from the PCB and measure it. For good decoupling, a higher value of at least 100 microfarads should be used in this type of circuit, and uh, a maximum data sheet shows uh, 220 microfarads but you can imagine that such a capacitor is more expensive so the guys in China probably decided it will work just fine with a 20 microfarad ceramic but that turned out to be a bad decision as many people are reporting this issue in fact it could very well be affecting all of the units being sold so the fix here is pretty simple we're going to have to open the goggles, desolder the existing capacitors and solder in a new higher value capacitor. I would suggest choosing at least 100 microfarads. You don't even need to desolder the existing capacitor because uh, adding capacitors in parallel will just add up the capacitance values. But I like to work very clean and uh, I want a single capacitor in there. It's best if you use a ceramic capacitor, a low voltage one, but as those are kind of hard to find in um, such high capacities, it's okay to use an electrolytic or a tantalum as well. We are talking very low voltages here, so you can pick a 4 volts rated capacitor with no issues. A good source for capacitors that can be used in this fix is a computer motherboard or better yet a laptop motherboard. 
you'll find at least a few of these uh, 220 microfarad tantalum polymer capacitors and these are usually very stable and uh, reliable capacitors. If you pick a tantalum capacitor or an electrolytic, you might ask yourself which way to connect the cap and uh, an app note from Maxim shows the capacitor with the plus side towards the signal source so that's how I'm going to install my capacitor because I'm using a tantalum and I don't want any adverse effects. Let's check the capacity of one of these. There you go, we got about 300 microfarad for this uh, 220 microfarad rated capacitor. So I think I'm going to use one of these. Fish Pepper points out on his blog that polarity is not such a big deal because on such low voltages, under 1.5 volts, electrolytic capacitors, for example, behave bipolar. I don't know about tantalum if that also applies to them, but I didn't know this uh, uh, property to say so of the capacitors. And on a quick Google search, I couldn't find anything on the subject. So if you know any documents that talk about this, please let me know in the comment section. This really sounds interesting. So first I'm going to take these apart. I'm going to have to unclip the faceplate and that comes off pretty easy. You just have to pull on the ends of the faceplate. Okay, so we got this unclipped. Now we're going to have to remove these uh, four screws. Now we should be able to split the two halves of the enclosure. Now it looks like the fan cable is in the way. We need to remove this small piece of uh, tape. Now we have these four screws holding the PCB in. We're going to have to remove those as well. It looks like the fan was supposed to be connected through a JST connector, but you know, they save cost by not fitting those connectors. They solder in the fan directly to the PCB. And now we can't separate the fan from the main PCB. It's strange how they routed uh, the RF signal from this connector uh, through this coax up to here, close to the RF module. I guess they couldn't get the um, correct impedance through this uh, PCB. Maybe it's just a two layer PCB. I'm not sure, but I'm sure this uh, small coax and its uh, connection will have some losses. So this uh, connector, this input will always have higher losses than this one, which is directly routed to the RF module. So what we need to do now is uh, unclip these uh, small uh, connectors to remove the uh, flat flex connectors going to the LCD. We need to pop this very small hinge in the up direction and now the flat flex should simply come off. Just like this. And there's something else. That small connector. Okay, so now we can work on this uh, PCB and the capacitor that we are interested in is, uh, let me show you a close up. This is the uh, capacitor that uh, we want to change. This is, uh, I think it's C458, the designator for this part. So the video signal comes through here goes through this uh, capacitor and then goes to this uh, chip this is the uh, series the series ac coupling capacitor to desolder this uh, capacitor i'm going to start by applying just a tiny bit of flux and then i'm going to use the solder blob method which involves creating a big uh, solder blob uh, that will touch both of the pads of the capacitor thus hitting it at the same time at both ends. And you saw how easy it was to get it off with this method. So let's check the uh, 
value of the capacitor we removed from the circuit yeah it's about 22 microfarads which is way too low for this uh, application if you want to completely uh, decouple any DC voltage offset now the problem is that the original capacitor that I have picked for this uh, replacement is kind of in a big package and as you can see the uh, pads extend beyond uh, what the PCB pads uh, were so I had to search for another one which is much smaller it's uh, it has a lower voltage rating but it's going to be okay for our application because we're all only seeing about uh, 0.5 volts or in uh, in this circuit it looks like this one might fit the pads uh, just nice so i've decided to use the hot air gun for soldering this capacitor it's just much easier to do it with a hot air gun you can do it with the soldering iron as well but you're probably going to have to uh, maybe scrape away some of the solder mass to, just to increase your contact surface on the copper but with hot air i can just place the capacitor on top of the old pads so I'm using this uh, aluminum foil just to protect the uh, plastic buzzer and the connector from the high heat coming uh, of the um, hot air gun. Okay, so we should be good now. I want the capacitor to go in this orientation with the uh, plus side towards the signal source. The hot air gun usually uh, dries up all the uh, flux in a solder joint so what I like to do after soldering with the hot air gun I like to uh, add a little bit of uh, flux to the uh, solder joint and then just heat it up uh, once more touch the solder joint with the uh, uh, soldering iron that way I get a perfect uh, joint Another way to do this uh, job if you don't have a small enough uh, capacitor or you don't have a hot air gun is to solder the capacitor on its side like this and you will get access to both the PCB pad and the pad on the capacitor and you can kind of create a big solder blob here to connect the uh, pad to the capacitor. Now all I have to do is uh, clean this with some uh, isopropyl alcohol. And it should have fixed the problem so now it's time to reassemble the uh, goggles and see if uh, the problem has disappeared the goggles are back together and uh, I have uh, checked for about five minutes in all different uh, uh, in all possible conditions and I could not replicate the problem I had before so it is fixed now big thanks goes out to uh, Fish Pepper for finding out this problem and documenting the problem. It was uh, an, a really easy fix because I already had all the information I needed. I hope this video will help um, people that uh, are looking for this fix. It's pretty easy to attempt yourself. If you have done soldering before, it should be pretty easy to solder on that uh, capacitor. And uh, if anyone is interested, I'll also link some sources for getting uh, capacitors in that uh, B size tantalum capacitors if you plan to use a tantalum. But like mentioned, you can also use whatever you have around. You can also use an electrolytic uh, 220 microfarad electrolytic uh, that you might have around. But if you're purchasing uh, one as new, I think it's worth getting a uh, smaller size tantalum because it will just look nice and clean after you finish uh, the job it would look like it was designed to be that way from the factory so don't forget to check out the links in the description and uh, let me know what you think about this video in the comment section thank you for watching and i'll see you next time